Hey guys, good afternoon. Um, I've got the, the phone back in the silly sideways cradle, so if it falls over or acts dumb, I'm really sorry. I'm hoping that it'll uh, behave itself. It tends to slide down in this cradle, and I always find myself adjusting it, which means you guys wobble and bounce around a lot, so I'm sorry about that. Um, I just left church. I'm on my way home, so I wanted to take a minute and talk to you guys about uh, my church family how I came to be there and my thoughts on some of that and how I feel like I was led to be in a specific place and how much those people mean to me and I'm not good about telling them that. So friends at Crossroads, if you're watching this, um, whether now or in the future when I'm out traveling, um, so many of you have touched my life in ways that you don't realize and I'm not good about saying it and I'm not good about showing it. Therefore, a lot of these people never know how they've touched me, but that's okay. Um, God knows how they've touched me and their reward is with them. So, um, Kurt and I uh, became members of Crossroads right about the time that he was diagnosed with cancer. And I think that a bunch of our family and friends are under the impression that that's why we joined a church or started really deepening our relationship with God. And that's not true. Um, that's absolutely not true. So I do believe that God led us to be at crossroads during our trial with cancer. Um, because of the way the timing went, it was just too coincidental. We were meant to be there with those people. Um, our journey back to Christ really started in 2020 when my husband had a heart attack. I think it really changed something within him. My husband and I have both always been believers. And I say that loosely because my husband was raised in I think um, probably a Southern Baptist church most of his life and then in his first marriage attended a church and um, I was raised of course in a fundamentalist church and then in an independent Baptist church for most of my life and he had stepped away from church I think because he had had some bad experiences at the end of his marriage and then just in all honesty um, you know I remember when he moved in and he brought his Bible with me I thought uh oh he and I might have issues because I, you know, this is not where my life is anymore. And I didn't like, it didn't, it wasn't really even a topic of conversation for us. And that's a bad thing, but I think God still meant for us to be together. It wasn't, we didn't discuss religion or what either of us thought about things. He knew that I had some, I was investigating alternative beliefs. He didn't have a problem with it, but it wasn't his gig. And I wasn't really like doing anything with it. I was just angry at God. And I'm a big enough woman to say it. I was really angry at God for so many years. And even now, sometimes I'm not angry, but I question him. And I think the Bible tells us we're allowed to question him and, you know, plead with him. I look at the book of Lamentations and I look at Job and I look at some of the stuff in Isaiah, you know, where these prophets cry out to God, I go, why God, you know, why, why does it have to be this way? And I feel like that's okay. But at that time, um, I had some what our current pastor calls church hurt and church hurt is a big hurt and that had happened for me twice there's some big things that happened in my life I can go over them another time I'm not going over them right now um, where I felt like the church let me down and it really shattered my relationship with God which tells me that my relationship with God wasn't that strong to begin with because my relationship with God should be intertwined but not completely wrapped up in the church like the church is not um, God. The church is a body of people that represent God. Um, but if they're not doing the things they should do, it doesn't mean that that's God attacking me. I don't know how to better say it. That's how I'm going to say it. So I had experienced church hurt and I was very angry. And for a number of years, I spent time investigating other types of beliefs and religions, spiritualities, um, everything from Buddhism to paganism, um, Unitarianism. I was never an atheist. I always knew there was something out there, but I tried to convince myself that the way I was being taught about the something out there was wrong because how could a loving and wonderful God allow the things to happen that were happening in my life all those years? Um, why did no one protect me? Where was God in that plan? And when I look back now, I look at who I am and what happened, and I realized there was a plan all along. Um, someone said today during our life group, I'm probably going to cry. It was Miss Pat. And people say this to me sometimes and it makes me feel so strange and awkward because I don't see it in myself and other people see it in me. Um, she said, because I said something during prayer time about asking for stability because I feel like right now my whole life is just up in the air. And she said, you're like one of the strongest people I know. 
you are such a testimony to stability and strength and to faithfulness in Christ. I mean, she said all these wonderful things to me. And, um, I don't know, my thought was just, that doesn't feel like what it is. But I guess that, and I said to her, I said, you know, when you look at me, you should understand that me being able to handle all this stuff that God throws at me with faith and strength is because I've been through so much of it before and survived. He's always carried me through it. And I know that I'm going to be okay no matter what. Um, I also secretly had an inside thought that a lot of the times I put that on me. I say that that's because of me and that's not true. It's not because of me. It's because of him. And, uh, sometimes even I need that reminder, but anyhow, I've been through so much and where was God in all of that? And so it took my son, uh, my son who has had many life issues. He was doing well for a while and he became a part of a church in the area where he lives. And he asked Kurt and I to come up and watch him get baptized. And I mean, one, that blew me away. My parents for years tried to get me to be a better steward of my children that God had given me and lead them in the way of Christ. And I didn't do it. I had hardened my heart to that. I was so angry with my parents, with the churches, with our family, with everyone and with God that I hardened my heart and I fought so hard against that. And I still regret it. I still regret it. I regret it to this day. It did a lot of things to my kids that I can't take back. I can't take back the ways in which my kids missed out because I did not lead them to Christ. My son found his way to Christ on his own through addiction and mental illness and also he ended up with a group of people. I have some thoughts on it. He professes to be a Christian but doesn't always necessarily um, follow through with the fruits. You know, like but I'm hoping he's going to get there. With time, I'm hoping he's going to get there and it's going to be okay. Um, so, we go to his church to watch him get baptized. And it was like the Holy Spirit was poured over me. I don't know how to better explain it than that. I couldn't stop crying. I was so emotional. And it wasn't when my son got up to go get baptized. It was the whole service. It was the people. It was the music. It was the worship. It was the, um, the, the message that they gave. Honestly, my son getting baptized really didn't bring up that kind of feeling in me. I mean, it did, but not not the way the rest of it did. It was like the Holy Spirit poured down over me and just opened my heart and cracked my heart open. I had already been slowly, I could feel myself slowly coming back around. I had been listening to podcasts of churches and speakers, and it was more on a motivational level. Um, but that was the impending moment where I knew, I knew that... I needed to come back to Christ. And in fact, um, after that time, I rededicated myself to Christ about a year later. Um, after, I mean, it just, it opened my whole world back up to this. And um, it was that moment. And I talked to my husband, Kurt, about it on the way home that day. And, you know, he said, I've been thinking too that maybe we need to find a church to be a part of. You know, we need, should be a part of a community of Christians. And he had been thinking more about Christ and that kind of stuff since his heart attack. And that was in 2020. My husband had a major heart attack and he said it was just God that saved us. We were getting ready to go out on our motorcycle and he was sitting on the porch and he had been rushing me. Are you, are you done? Yet? I had the chickens out in the front yard. My daughter was living there at the time with her son and you know, he really wanted me to hurry up so we could go. He had pulled out the motorcycle. He was dressed. He was ready. I was still out there putzing around with the chickens and, um, had I gotten ready and gone sooner, had I not wasted that extra time, I think we both would be dead right now. Um, I think it would have been a much uglier death or something horrible would have happened. We were getting ready to get on the motorcycle and go very fast down back roads with no phone service. And um, he had a heart attack just a couple minutes before we were getting ready to get on the bike. Like literally, I stood up and I said, all right, AJ, put the baby chickens away. Kurt and I are gonna go on a ride. We'll be back in about an hour. And Kurt stood up and looked at me and he said, I think we need to go to the hospital. I'm having a heart attack. It was meant to be. It was meant to be. So he said, God saved us. And so we started looking for a church and we visited many, many churches. Um, 
there wasn't a denomination preference per se. I was willing to give a shot at anything. I just had some theological things that I believe were right and my husband believed were right and some that were wrong and he believed were wrong and we wanted to make good decisions on those things. So um, we started looking at just local churches and we visited 12 churches. I know you're going to think this is silly, but 12 disciples, I chose 12 churches and 12 shots at it. And then we narrowed it in. And ever, after every service, we'd go to lunch and we'd sit down and talk about the pros and cons. Did something within that church speak to us? How did we feel about the people? Did we feel led to be there? Like, wh what did we feel about everything to do with this church? And we, um, we looked at it and we narrowed it in. And then as we got down to less and less churches, we started revisiting. So then we finally got down to two churches um, in our area, and one was Faith, um, they're an Assembly of God church, and one was Crossroads Community Church. And really what pushed us over the edge are the people at Crossroads. And that's a big part of, you know, what kept us there. Really, we enjoyed both. Um, there were a couple things about the Assembly of God Church faith in our area that we didn't like, but they were things that we could have passed over or still um, been a part of that church. They weren't they weren't parts of the doctrine of the church. That's the word of that were um, wrong to us or anything like that. It was just there were some weird things about the church itself that we didn't like how it operated. Um, but they weren't things that it was like, like for my husband, he really hates the laying on of hands thing. He doesn't mind it in like a small group situation, but they would have people come up to the front and like the pastor would put his hand on their heads and then everybody would tuck each other and all get in a big knot. And it just kind of bothered him. He didn't like crowds and people being all, it didn't bother me so much. Um, it was also that church was big. It had multiple campuses and it just didn't feel personal. Um, the small campus that you were with was personal, but then if you were part of a, a life group or church group or whatever, you may not know half the people there. So there were a couple things, but when we went to Crossroads, it just felt like home. My husband quickly became fast friends with the pastor and a lot of gentlemen there at the church. I have a harder time making friends, and it's another one of the benefits of, part of being part of a church community, but even I have started to have not really deep relationships, but at least some surface friendships with some of the ladies there, and we always felt good about going and excited about seeing people. Uh, I never woke up going, oh, I'm not sure I want to go to church. Do you want to go to church? No, we got up and go, hey, we're going to go to church. We were excited about it. It was always good. So we uh, we went back and forth between Faith and Crossroads for a while and then ended up choosing Crossroads. So we didn't go to the members meeting or any of that stuff initially. We just started going. Um, that was, we dedicated ourselves to Crossroads um, as a couple, we decided in January of 2023, um, right after New Year's. Sorry, I got distracted by a text that came across the screen that says, I love you, mommy. Um, January of 2023, right after New Year's, we decided that Crossroads was the church for us and that we were going to spend our time at Crossroads. And so we started attending every single Sunday and we started attending some of the um, get togethers and ladies nights. And, you know, my husband didn't really get involved in the men's groups. He wasn't, he always felt awkward about that kind of thing. I think if he had had a longer period of time to be a part of it, he probably would have. And the closer we got to when he got sick, he was actually starting to step into that. And I'm really sad that he didn't get to be a part of it. But, um, I did, I started, you know, I would say, Hey, I have ladies night tonight or have this tonight or that tonight. And he'd be like, okay, I'll see you you know. Um, so, to a members night, uh, a new members night in May. I think it was May. It might have been early June. I think it was late May of 2023. Uh, we had come back from a trip and we decided to become members and we filled out all the stuff to become prospective members, um, went to the new members class that's a requirement, um, talked to the pastor, all the things. And I think it was about, I think it was like within the same week or right around the week that my husband got his diagnosis of cancer that we got the email from the church that said, congratulations on your new membership to our church. Um, at that time, it really didn't resonate with me yet what that was going to mean, but it sure did change a lot of things down the road. So we got this and right away, this trial in our life started and 
the folks in our church immediately stepped up to hold our hands and visit with us and talk to us and be part of our lives, it blew my mind. These people did not know me, uh, did not know my husband, and we had just started attending church there. And, you know, for them to step up in our lives in such a big way, um, I remember one of the, the things um, being that my husband, he was always, like, everyone always knows Kurt. Oh my gosh, Kurt, 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 Kurt. Um, huh, there's only premium gas. This is weird. Um, uh, I think I'm going to go to Holly Hill. So my husband, um, everyone always knows Kurt. He's just such a personable person. Everyone always knew him everywhere we went. They still, they still do it. Like I go to the bank, I go to some other places and they're like, Oh, Mrs. Infinger, you know, we miss Mr. Infinger so much. They just, they don't really know me. I'm, I'm working on it. But all these guys from our church, he had made all these friends. Um, all he had bonded with all these people he had talked to and chatted with about fishing and camping and traveling and just general man topics for lack of a better way to put it. And they would call him and pray with him. They would check in on him. They would send him messages and they don't know how much that uplifted our spirits, not just his, but mine as well. Like to know that there are people out there praying for you and caring about you. And we didn't know these people. We had just started attending this church and God laid it on their heart to, to be part of it with us. And it was such a painful and tender part of our lives. And, um, I don't know. I, uh, I have a lot of feelings about that. Big feelings on that. Um, oh my goodness. Sorry. And so my husband, um, as this, as this illness went on and on, he was able to attend church less and less. And there was less time for us both to be part of it. Initially, um, between June and August, we still went to church every Sunday. Um, we were very involved. Um, in August, it really started to be hard for Kurt to attend church. The, he would get these horrible chemo headaches and the music was so loud and he started wearing ear, um, little, uh, the little foam ear thingies. Uh, the word just escaped me. He would wear these little foam ear blocker things that he would put into his ears during the worship part of service because the music really bothered him and then he would take them out during the message. And so like he had to put effort into it and then people kept saying, you know, is it should you really be here at church? I mean, is it the risk of infections and illnesses we're going into the fall? And my husband, God bless him, said, you know, God's taking care of us. We've got this. We're not worried about it. We don't smooch all over everyone. We sit all the way back here in the back, you know, if our doctor says we shouldn't come. And our doctor had said, you know, during the height of sickness season, you should wear a mask or you should try to not be in crowded locations, but use your judgment. So my husband decided that church was a worthy, a worthy reason to risk it. So we just didn't hug a lot of people or shake a lot of people's hands. We just sit in the back and we never wore masks. We just kind of went and you know, God did not cause him to catch any diseases. Uh, did not allow him, I should say, to catch any diseases or sicknesses while we were there. Um, I caught something at one point and I was terrified that I was going to give it to her. I don't know if I caught it in church or somewhere else, but you know, again, God did not let that happen. So after August though, really, we couldn't attend church very often. I went a few times by myself. Kurt had a respite nurse, um, Natasha, who would come and sit with my husband. And I tried to pick some days that were Sundays that she could come and sit so that I could go to church. And it was really weird for me going by myself. I didn't like it. And so I finally decided that it wasn't for me. I, I needed to be with him. I really needed to be with him. I very much limited how often until the very end, uh, when he needed full-time care, I really limited how often we utilized that nurse. I really needed to be with him. And so with church, we started watching it online. So we live in the digital age, what a blessing. Um, we started watching it online. I had joined a Bible study through our church at the beginning of August, maybe end of July. And it started, I think it started the beginning of September. Might've been the end of August. My brain is very widow foggy. So. At that point, really the only connection I had with our church, that I had with our church, was through that group. And those ladies checked on me, cared for me, prayed for me, let the rest of the church know what was going on. 
our life group members, because um, we had started, just had a few visits with the life group, just a few, just literally a few. Um, those we had, um, those people had started checking in on Kurt, um, several of the elders in our church, and of course our pastor, who is friends with my husband and was one of his fishing buddies, they were checking in with Kurt, but we really had minimal interactions. Just in all honesty, we had to step away from this church that we had just joined. And they kept reaching out. They just kept holding our hands. They kept telling us they cared. And I know that's probably what's expected, right? They're people of God. But for me and for Kurt, it was just such a wonderful thing to see that kind of generosity of spirit. People reaching out to us. And um, so... Um, all throughout my husband's illness, they visited us in the hospital. They visited us as he died. Um, I think the last group of people from the church that came to visit literally were the day before he died. Maybe the morning of. No, it was the day before. The day before he died. Um, I, I cannot tell you how much it meant to me. I cannot tell you how much it meant to me over time. All of this love that came from our church and... Um, I have struggled so much. Initially, Kurt and I talked about this and he said, I want people to see how much we believe. I want them to know that even in the midst of this, we believe that there's a plan and that we're trusting God. And we did. And we, we made sure that they knew we prayed and we prayed and we prayed for the right thing. And even when he died, you know, my husband looked at me and he said, listen, I'm good. God has given us multiple chances at this. There are, there are many times that something could have happened that we know about, and there are probably millions of times that we don't know about, and I'm good. I've had this wonderful life. I have you, I have our kids. I've had a wonderful and blessed life, and I'm okay. I know where I'm going. Sorry. I know where I'm going, and I'm okay with this. And uh, I said, I, I know, baby. And we, um, we, we, we did that. And, um, when he died, I knew he went to be with God. I called our pastor and he said, do you need me? And I said, I don't pastor. I know where he is. Just wait till tomorrow. And, um, because it was late in the evening when I called him. Um, he prayed with me and then I let him get off the phone because I really didn't need him to drive out to the house. There were people there, some godly, some not. And, uh. It wasn't until March, two months after my husband died, that it really started to hit me. And I really started not, I'm not angry at God again. I'm not, I love him and I trust him. But I really started to question my faith. I prayed so hard and Kurt and I had just come back to church. We, you know, we were putting our, our feet back on, on this path, um, on his path. like building this closer relationship, this closer walk with him. And so I just didn't understand why. And I still, today, I, I asked them to pray for me. I said, I'm really struggling with my faith some days, guys. I told my life group, I said, I just, I don't understand why sometimes. And I think it's okay to feel that way. You know, God, in the Bible, there's multiple books and multiple prophets, they cry out to God, you know, why God, why have you forsaken? Why, why are you allowing this to happen to me? And I, that's how I feel some days. I'm like, God, why? Why did you have to take him from me? We were so happy. And you gave me this wonderful man, this wonderful godly man to lead me and to lead our family. And then you took him from me and I don't understand why. So I have days like that. But at the same time, I know that there's a plan. And I don't know what God's plan is, but keep thinking to myself, maybe when I'm on my trip, I'm supposed to meet someone, you know, maybe I'm supposed to lead someone, maybe I'm supposed to show someone. Um, I don't think about it often, but when people like um, this Pat in my life group today, when they say to me, you know, you're really an inspiration to a lot of people, I think maybe the way I'm handling this is like what I'm supposed to get, I, I you know, I don't know. I don't know what God's plan is, but I know that there is one. And I this group of people at our church, they continue to 
stand behind me and check on me and that not not uh, let me just be honest about it there are some days where i think not in the like it's the cancer is the new baby thing right you know cancer is the new baby they drop off over time but there have been those within our church who have been faithful to check in on me and ask about me and help me and, and be part of my life um even through all of this and i hope god blesses them and they they mean so much to me. So, um, it blows my mind um, that God put us in this church. Literally, I remember getting that email that says, Congratulations, welcome to Crossroads. The week that, that we found out that my husband had this horrific cancer. At that time, I really thought that the cancer was a temporary situation. And that soon, everything would be back to normal, my husband would be well, and I thought nothing of the fact that that all happened. Now, looking back, I realize that God placed us there because that's where we were supposed to be during this event. We were supposed to have these people in this place to be a part of, and I want to encourage you... Um, we live in a digital age, and I understand that, but it's really important to be part, part of a church community, and God directs us to be part of a body of believers. There are lots of reasons for that, and there, we're not meant to be alone, number one. Um, you're always stronger as a team, right? But in your life, you're supposed to have people to hold you accountable, to hold you up when things are going wrong, and for you to return the favor to. That That's part of being part of the body of Christ. And online churches and online groups are great. And yes, you can worship Jesus anywhere. You can worship Jesus in your truck. You can worship Jesus in your car, outside of your house. And I'm not saying that going to church every week is what being a Christian is all about. I'm saying... You need to be part of a body of believers. Um, I know people who go to church every single week and they're not part of body of believers. Let me explain that. They go through the motions and they show up and they're seen, but they're not part of it. They don't, um, how do I say all this? They don't volunteer with another church. They don't give up their spirit, meaning they don't, they don't help. They're not, you know, they're not out doing it. They are not part of a life group. They are not part of a Bible study. They are not having a relationship with those people in the church outside of just, it's Sunday, hello, I'm here, it's Sunday, now I'm leaving again. That's not the same thing. You might as well just stay home. If that's the case, you truly are just coming for the message and to sing, you can watch that online somewhere. You don't, don't bother coming to hang out with us at church. That is not being a part of the body of Christ. You are supposed to actively be a part of this group of people. Talk to them throughout the week. I'm trying to be really good about texting and calling and having lunches and I'm trying to volunteer. Those are the things. Like, I'm part of this group. They are my family now. Um, I guess I could break into this subject. Maybe I'll cut this video in half and make it two. I am concerned about what I'm going to be doing um, when I'm on the road because... I plan to travel pretty continuously for, I'm hoping, praying for, we'll see what God gives me, 12 to 24 months. Um, God could keep me on the road for the rest of my life, or God could send me back here in six months. I don't know yet. I'm trusting him to make the decisions. But while I'm on the road, it's my intention to watch the Reality is podcast, plug for the Reality is podcast for Crossroads Community Church is fantastic. Um, watch church service um, via my phone. I'll be driving a lot, so why not? And um, I'm going to continue the Zoom Bible studies that I do on Tuesday nights with our ladies group, uh, God willing. And plus or minus any other things like that I can come up with. And um, I want to keep in touch with those people. When I come back to Charleston, I intend to go visit my church. But while I'm on the road, I intend to visit other churches. So I'm going to kind of look up, I'm going to see if I can find others who are members of the same group of Southern Baptists that we're a part of 
but I'm probably going to get to meet a lot of people. I hope I get to share my testimony with people and I hope that it makes a difference in their lives. I would love to um, go to services or attend events that just happen to pop up around times that I'm visiting places so that I can meet good people. And um, I don't know how that's going to affect my relationship with my church. I think officially our membership bylaws say that if you haven't attended in six months, that they officially drop you from the roster of being a member. I think that they can bypass that for me if I'm going to be traveling. Um, but I do intend to go back regularly. I have a whole bunch of family. You know, I'm not going to be able to not see my family. I, um, but I don't, you know, I don't know how that's going to go. It's going to be interesting to me to visit a whole bunch of places and meet a whole bunch of people. Um, but I'm dedicated, at least for right now, to being a part of this church family, this community of Christ. And I encourage you to find those people. Find your people. It's important to find your people. We live in such a society of disconnect. And I hate that for us. I hate that we live in this society of disconnected love and compassion and friendship. So many people spend all their time staring at these little boxes like I'm staring at while I'm driving. Instead of staring at people um, and caring about people and being part of people lives and that's not how God intended things to be. It's not at all how God intended things to be. So I'm going to stop this video here. I'm coming into the little town of Holly Hill. I had to come an extra town over to get gas because I stopped at a gas station earlier in this video if you noticed and all the pumps set out of order. So I've driven an extra 15 minutes out of my way to go to the next town and I have to get gas here no matter what. So wish me luck, say a prayer and find your people.